Hello, everyone. Um, so hi, welcome to our presentation. My name is Zamira. I'm the CTEP AmeriCorps member at St. Paul Central Library, and I'm here with my civic engagement group members, Abby Hebler of Minneapolis Central Library, Jack Castro of Transcend IT, and Ollie Peters of Film North. And we're going to talk about our project that was done for the Franklin Learning Center, which was a series of videos to help remote learners prepare for the online GED. Jack will give us some more background information on our project next. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Jeff Castro. Uh, I serve at Transcend IT. So our original idea was um, to not only bridge the digital divide, but also bridge the generational divide. So our original idea was to partner uh, with a community organization uh, to teach youth different technology skills for uh, creative endeavors. Uh, we were thinking about virtual reality painting, um, different video editing and uh, picture editing software. Um, and then we would have those youth go to different uh, assisted living and nursing homes uh, to teach uh, those populations how to use it um, to kind of bring them all together um, under this kind of creative way so to not only help with technology skills but also maybe turn what might be um, uh, nervousness around different generations uh, and bringing them all together uh, to learn. However, uh, COVID um, really impacted our project, you know, a lot of these community organizations shut down for the summer. It was no longer safe to go into nursing homes. Um, so we had to pivot our project uh, to this new idea. Hi, my name is Abby Hebler and I'm finishing up my second year of service at uh, Minneapolis Central Library. Um, and yeah, so the impact of COVID on our project. So after everything closed and we were all working from home, um, we started meeting weekly as a group to sort of brainstorm ideas about how to move forward with our project. Um, and at first, a lot of our ideas were really similar to our original one, um, which was exploring ways for technology to be a creative outlet. Um, but yeah, so eventually we switched gears from this when it became clear that as a result of COVID, there were new unmet needs in our communities related to technology access and education. Uh, we wanted to shift our focus to supporting people that were most affected by these new circumstances rather than struggling to engage young people from a distance. Um, so we did a lot of research and reached out to a lot of our connections before finally forming our partnership with the Franklin Learning Center. Uh, which is a program of the Hennepin County Library System. As a group, we recognized that they were doing some really meaningful work um, and we wanted to support their virtual services that they were starting to offer. Um, hi, I'm Ollie from Film North. Um, so as Abby mentioned, the Franklin Learning Center is um, a part of the Hennepin County Library and it's essentially a program that provides digital literacy and technology help to adults of all ages. Um, they serve a very diverse population of people from varying economic backgrounds and varying digital literacy levels. So um, they became fully remote since the pandemic hit and they needed help with instructional videos so they could send videos that we made to um, their students to assist with being online. Um, they do online tutor sessions now, um, but having those videos helps um, students figure out things on their own when they can't be in a tutor session. Um, And so with their GED related um, tasks for their students. So we made how to create a Gmail account, which you need to sign up for your GED.com account, how to send your GED score report back to the Franklin Learning Center, um, as well as things like how to enlarge text on your keyboard while you're taking the GED. And um, they also started using our whiteboard app during 
tutoring sessions. So it's basically a shared screen where tutors and students can write on it in any form that they want or add a photograph. Um, and it's a good way to have an interactive learning session. So Jack screen recorded himself doing the tasks while narrating. Um, I edited and Abby also worked on voiceovers and Abby was also able to attend a tutoring session to um, give us better context on what the video should look like and people's digital literacy skills. And this is a screenshot from one of the videos. Um, so I just made sure that I had very clear captions with large text to emphasize certain points that were important. Um, I often slowed down the pace while editing to make sure it didn't go too fast and like stress the student out while they were using it. And like I said, Jack made sure to speak slowly and clearly. And when Abby did narrations, she made sure to do the same. Yes, so uh, efforts and costs, we were able to get this project done for the Franklin Learning Center and spend zero dollars. So that was really nice. Uh, video content that we created for learners is available online free of charge. Uh, we were able to use open source screen capture software to record the footage and then edit our videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, either uh, courtesy of our sites or our own subscriptions. And microphones were also provided for us to do voiceovers via the Franklin Learning Center. So we ended up creating a total of 11 videos um, that the Franklin Learning Center is sending out to students and volunteers as needed. Most of these videos, such as creating an account on GED.com and sending your score report, um, those are pretty specific to their programming. However, others, such as how to create a Gmail account, could be useful to many people. So within the next couple of weeks, all of these videos are going to be listed on the SPNN YouTube channel, as well as p2pu.org, which stands for Peer-to-Peer -peer University, and it's an organization that promotes an open source learning circle model for learning. Um, so yeah, we are really happy with this outcome being that we were able to support the work of the Franklin Learning Center. Okay, and so this is a photo that we took during our last civic engagement meeting with Milo, our contact with the Franklin Learning Center. Um, we're very happy to have worked with our partner organization on a project that's directly helping patrons to navigate distance learning and succeed in their educational journeys, journeys <laughs> despite the present challenges of the pandemic. Um, so thank you to Milo, the Franklin Learning Center, SPNN, our civic engagement group members, and everyone involved for their help in making this project a success. And we want to thank you all as well for watching our presentation and we're now available to answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thanks, Amira. And uh, Milo, I, I noticed Milo is actually in our audience today. Uh, and Milo, I didn't know if you wanted to unmute or uh, you could put your screen on if you want. If you want to say a few words from your perspective about the project as the community partner. Sure, I felt really comfortable working with this group because I knew Abby already from Minneapolis Central. We had a really good experience working with CTEPs. And as we were getting a new online remote tutoring program started. We were creating a lot of videos for our tutors and for some of our students, but we knew based on feedback we were getting that some of our videos were not slow enough or clear enough. Sometimes there was just a tiny step and we needed a video that was just right for that student to answer that question. So it's a lot of work and it's been going really well, but the CTEP videos have helped a lot in specific instances where a student isn't sure how to navigate a specific website or part of the test requires flipping between pages. There, there are aspects like that that I think will be really useful. And we expect to use these videos to help train new staff when we're back in our physical space. I think these will live on and be useful to other programs. Great, thanks for joining us today, Milo. It's really good to be here. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, Lisa said, that's a lot of videos. 
and she asked, they'll be on the blog link after next week? Yeah, we'll update the blog post to include the links if that's okay with. Yes, yes, <laughs> we will. Okay, Great. awesome, thanks, Lizzie. Okay, um, Kim uh, asked, what was the hardest part of adapting this project to a virtual format? Um, I guess just coming up with a new idea that felt meaningful to us. Um, that's in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else from my group wants to share. Yeah, I mean, I think our original project was, you know, such in like a different area that, you know, I think just the finding a new partner and a new idea, uh, I think that was the biggest hurdle. But once we got past that, once we met up with Milo, I think things went very smooth.